This is from Mussolini himself. Now, just to give you a little background, Conciano, the foreign minister of the Italian government, is Mussolini's son-in-law. Son-in-law. How many of you have your son-in-law working in your business? Not many of us do. There's a good reason, because sometimes you want an objective third-party report. And here's what he says to him. Hitler always faces me with a fait accompli. This time I'm going to pay him back in his own coin. He'll find out from the papers that I've occupied Greece. He is being counseled by his generals, the men on the ground, because remember, by 1939, he's already moved into Albania, and he's securing Albania for himself. This is Mussolini. And he's being told by his generals, two more divisions, Il Duce, and we will be able to knock the Greeks out. Two more divisions. The El Duce, the leader, Mussolini, is so confident that he's done the following. He's issued an order sending home 300,000 active duty soldiers to go harvest wheat and releasing 600,000 reservists to do the same thing because there's such a shortage back in Italy. You have to remember that the Italians are not mechanized to the, the extent that other countries are. So a lot of the harvest has to be done by hand. So everybody's back at home. They're taking care of the produce. The rates are depleted. So when we talk about divisions, we're talking about strength of two instead of three units in a division. These divisions are understaffed to start with. And he's going to think that he's going to march into Greece and take them over. Now, this is a little different view. The Greeks don't have a beef with Germany in 1939-40. Why? Two reasons. Historically, there has been rather decent relationships between the Greeks and the Germans. Because when Greece got its independence in the 1800s, the first royal family they were able to put into the Greek monarchy was from where? Barbaria, Germany. And it's been a barbarian line of kings that has succeeded through this. Now you've got to remember that when we talk about royalty in Europe, everybody is a first cousin to somebody else. If you remember before World War I, Queen Victoria's three, three uh, grandchildren, William, Nicholas, George, right? Russia, Germany, England. All first cousins. So there's been this long relationship of family. And then also erase out of your mind that there's this great affinity of Greece with Britain, that somehow Britain owned Greece. That has been a hostile relationship in the 1900s because Greece had territorial desires for many of the islands that the Brits had. So when our author, Keegan, goes through this big gassing here about how wonderful this was like a British pond to Greece was a British pond, I think he's really yearning for something a little more. It wasn't quite that way. So the war isn't really about Greece. But why does it become Greece? Because Italy desires to hark back to the time of Venice. They want to control the eastern Mediterranean Sea. They're particularly interested in the Greek Peloponnese and the islands of Crete, Naxos, and Cyprus. These would be ideal jumping blocks for them to support an Italian campaign. And remember, they want to kind of develop a roadway to where? Their newfound colonies in Africa. So if we can start with Libya and move down, we can get to Ethiopia. It'd be a beautiful place. And Hitler's been rather mute upon his Balkan policy. He hasn't articulated any desires. And rightfully so. He does not want to get involved in the Balkans at this point. This is not his fight, not now. So Mussolini takes initiative. Now, Germany is interested, however, in Romania, Hungary, and Bulgaria. Why Bulgaria, you say? 
Well, Bulgaria goes back to the Second Balkan War. Bulgaria aligned itself because it didn't get the deal it thought it was going to get out of the First Balkan Wars. They felt cheated by the Serbs and the Greeks. So they turned their self in with the Ottomans and they attacked those countries. And there's a great feeling that they will turn again when presented opportunity, they will attack. So the interests of Germany is to get Hungary and Romania, Hungary being part of the old Austro-Hungarian Empire, a natural ally, let us in. Let Romania let us in for the oil, we'll pro provide protection, and get Bulgaria to flip because they want territory. And he's successful in doing that in due time. But he's not interested in Hung uh, Yugoslavia and Greece. That's not his fight. It's too mountainous, it's not in his interest to have it. But if he's going to get it, it does provide some great resources. One of the things that I, I found interesting, that potentially 45% of the Balkans could be used to support German needs in terms of cereal and other grains. Remember, you've got more people, you're in a wartime economy. If you can't have your own people growing it, you take it from who? Your conquered people. The other thing is the amount of bauxite and aluminum that could have been gotten from Yugoslavia and Greece. This is an area rich in those resources. And we know how important aluminum will become during World War II as a lightweight metal. And the other thing, of course, is the oil fields in Ploesti, which are part of it. Now, was there any indication that Italy was going to strike? <coughs> yes. In the months preceding October, there had been increased hostilities, incidents between Italy and Greece, including one particular incident where a light cruiser, the, uh, the Ellie, was attacked in a Greek port by Italian plates. Now, Greece did not wish to escalate this. They reported the issue. They left it alone. They figured, why stir up a problem? And there's been this intense uh, propaganda campaign that was going on, too, in the Italian press, vilifying Yugoslavia, vilifying Greece, this is happening, so. And they're also making open or, or, overtures to Bulgaria's Tsar Boris. Hey, jump in now. We'll give you what you want if you attack with us. At first, Bulgaria is a little hesitant to go in it itself. It's not going to do it until the Nazis and the Germans assist them.